Good morning. Uh, this is a product uh, video for Three Deep. Um, this is my, I want to say rules light, but it's probably near a rules medium um, D6 system. Now, a Three Deep, uh, you, you're looking at it on the um, screen here. It is listed as an OSR game, but um, and it's also listed as OGL. But there is no D and D um, material in here at all. The only mentions of anything relating to that would be the Wizards of the Coast copyright in the uh, OGL. The reason I call it um, OSR is because it really does lean into the rulings, not rules, um, what style of play. Uh, by which I mean, when we when I talk about skills in a little bit, it, things like if you wanted to use a skill you know, kind of to intimidate someone, say, uh, if you were going to do it by slamming them against the wall and threatening them, then you would apply your strength um, modifier to it. Um, whereas if you were going to try and play, you know, good cop, bad cop, you would, you know use a more appropriate stat um you know it's not a case of there's this skill this stat and you roll to see if you succeed you tell the uh, game master um you know how what you're going to do and how you're doing it and the game master will tell you what skill to roll and what to add um so it's role playing led rather than rolling dice led and for me, the whole OSR was this kind of simpler way of, you know, just describe your character's actions. And, um, you know, the game master, you know, if there's a chance of failure, will get you to um, you know, roll the dice. So that's my idea of OSR. It's got nothing to do with D&D &D at all. Um, in, in my mind, it is a play style. Um and that is what I was going for by labelling this as OSR. It is OGL because I the game is open for anyone to take what they want, modify it. You can write for the game. There's also a free compatibility license that if you are a publisher and or would like to get into publishing, you, know, you can just um, write for Three Deep, and there's a compatibility logo and you, know, you can just do it um you know there's no royalties to pay you know it's open it's genuinely an open system now three deep um i say it was written by a game master for game masters it's very much about um world building and playing the game you want to play which means you can pull out anything you want shove in anything you want it's really quite modular um the three deep refers to there's only ever three levels of complexity um so weapons are light medium or heavy things are you know, low tech you know contemporary high tech um it, armor is light medium and heavy you know everything comes in threes all the way through this everything comes in threes and they generally relate to 1d6 2d6 3d6 so I'm just going to um, flip through so you can see a little bit um, of what's going on here. Uh, so we start with character creation. Um, stats are, you, know, you just, it's all on 2d6. Um, and you know, strength, endurance, agility, logic, and empathy. So it's, there's not a huge um, you know, a number of stats. Uh, three physical, two mental. Um, I don't think you need masses and masses of stats. You know, it's not the game's not about the numbers. Um, stat bonuses range from minus two to plus two. Even if you've got huge stats, the bonuses never go beyond uh, plus two. Um, so uh, right, there's twenty skills in the game. You can add more. You can take them away. As I said, the uh, the skill. You tell the game master what you want to do. The game master tells you what skill to roll. Um, and so this bit covers, you know, sort of partial successes, making progress towards um, 
a, you know, a bigger goal, uh, difficulty factors, failing, you know, basically it's a sort of uh, failing forward is, um, you know, the, failing a skill roll shouldn't stop the story dead. Opposing skills, uh, outside factors, and there's something called ones and sixes. Now, um, think of these more as kind of criticals and uh, critical success, critical failure. Um, you gain bonuses. Ones and sixes come up with um, skills and in combat. Uh, so your character is built out of his stats or her stats, um, their skills, their cultural background. Um, and each cultural background comes with three skill bonuses. Um, and all the skill bonuses are cumulative. So, again, there are here, I've only um, listed a few. Because this is a game master and a world building type game, you know, you could explode urban into every single city state in your um game you know the coastal uh, ones you could explode those into it you know, so you know you can have a roman you can have a celtic you can have a goth you you can you know explode them out you know, although there are six for you to start with um, you can have as many as you like and you can create them on the fly as as a player character if your player says that i want to you know play a roman or if you want to play a you know a navy seal or you know a, a stormtrooper you you can just um it creates the culture and give a few bonuses um uh, to describe the benefits of that culture and but they're all balanced they all get three um plus ones um so yeah you can kind of do it incrementally as you go um now you know there's the the, the normal list of skills um the only odd one in here really is there's combat and there are sp specific weapon skills so a specific weapon skill is um your skill with that style of weapon combat covers everything from sort of um, combat awareness um dirty tricks um if you've ever played something like hero system where you would have general levels and you could have a general level in combat you, know, you can apply so you can stack your combat skill with a weapon skill but you could um, use combat also for jinking and zigzagging to avoid fire. So it's a little bit of parry. It's a, it's a catch-all combat skill. Um, and crew member is another odd one. And it covers... You could be part of a tank crew. If your background was you know, you're part of a tank crew or in the artillery, then it would be covered by um, crew member... If you were, uh, you know, you can use crew member for firing shipboard guns in a space battle, firing a cannon in a sea battle. It's a catch-all. You know, the the skill has a name, but on your character sheet, you can call it what you like to reflect the color and flavor of the um, the campaign. Um, there are races. Um, now, this game was written. It was actually written about 1986. It was published in 2017. Um, early 2017 i would probably have called those ancestries today um if i revamp well i i am going to revamp um the pdf in the future it, that will change um now these are a little bit um they they come up with uh every character has something that ties it into the um into the setting so you have to work with the game master or the game master works with the characters um you have friends family and affiliations no characters truly without some kind of um family in inverted commas really you know your family could have been the marines they could have been your units they they um they could be people that have taken you in you know it doesn't have to be sort of a you know genetic family but you know, every character 
requires some kind of tie into the setting. Um, every character has motivations and drivers, um, and these can be these are all tools. So when the game master's got those characters, they have already got something from which to you know you, the game master can invoke your motivation and you know, use it as the core of the um, you know, of a starting adventure or later on. These also relate to the solo rules which come later. Um, equipment, um, nothing particularly exciting. Um, money in 3D is just called bits, and you can reskin them as you know, copper, silver, gold. You can have them as credits. You can have them as dollars. Um, there is a very um, rough conversion here that one bit, sorry, two bits is roughly equivalent to a dollar, a euro, or a British pound for comparison. Um, I give that comparison because if you want to start bribing people for the players to have a concept of, um, you know, a thousand bits is 500 pounds, you know, is that going to be enough to sway a security guard? You know, I'd have said probably not, but it all depends on the different, um, uh, on the different system. So, but yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, a little handy conversion rate. It's also useful for the game master when the, at some point a player is going to ask you for something that's not on the equipment list. If you know roughly how much it costs today, you can just double it and that's how much it costs in bits. And then just shift it up or down for availability. Um, so that was equipment, that was modern equipment, uh, fancy equipment, there's modern equipment, um, sci-fi equipment um, you, you, you sci-fi armor it, it's all kind of sci-fi armor is just considered to be say lighter and less encumbering than contemporary armor weapons roughly the same um, you know everything gets lighter stronger tougher and then there's a, a worked character creation example and character sheet magic um, you get a pool of magic points, uh, which is multiplied by your magic skill. So if you have no magic skill, if you multiply anything by zero, it's zero. So you have no magic points. Um, as your um, there's there's no actual professions or classes, um, levels or anything like that. Skills improve incrementally. So the more magic you do, and the more magic research you do, and the magic training you get, the more your magic skill will improve. The same goes for guns, you know, um, navigation, all that sort of thing. The more you practice, the more they improve. It's all kind of incremental um, uh, increases. But magic is spent, you have a pool of magic points, and you can create different... Um, effects every effect has a cost um you know it, it's 10 mana to move 100 kilos of um, matter one mana to um uh, move one kilo and you, you know things in, increase and decrease the value players absolutely love this because it's a single set of rules the special effects are all listed afterwards um they can go away with the rules and they can create spells and they say okay and they can cost it all up and they can think oh do i want to do slightly less damage for longer do i want to do um, more damage instantly um so they can create spells and if they've stuck to the rules they should be balanced and the game master can then it kind of just approve, disapprove them purely on a thematic um, th style. You know, if the magic in your world is all about summoning dark forces and um, that sort of thing, then you might want to veto fireballs and lightning bolts. If the magic is all about um, curses, you know, then you the players should recognize that and they shouldn't be building spells which don't fit the style and genre now supers if you wanted to create um, superpowers you would use you know, the magic um, skills skill and the magic rules are used for building superpowers 
and and magic items and there are actually rules for um you know, there's you know drawing mana from other people um you can uh, you collaborate you can create magic items the rules are in here they are very very simple um there's examples of spells um just so you know, i've done some of the work for you because it's you know, it had you know, 30 years of playing there's plenty of examples um of the most common things in here um right so then there's the rules on experience now speed i'm going to um the the DNA of Three Deep is there's bits of Car Wars, Steve Jackson's Car Wars in here. Um, we used to role play that in my group, and um, but we also played Champions. So the same kind of thing of there being so many phases in a um, in a turn, and fast characters get to move more often. Everyone gets to move at some point. Um, so. Now that these same speed rules work with vehicles and characters, and so this is part of its kind of DNA. The champions hero system side of it, the magic system was inspired by the way you buy powers and um, skills in uh, hero system and GURPS and and that sort of thing. Um, you know, the speed movement sort of comes from champions and. Uh, 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 car wars um the stats when you do damage in combat it comes off your stats you know, rather like traveler you know it, it's it's broadly compatible with um cepheus system but the you know, base level for a skill is one in, in cepheus it's zero so you, know, you could just revise you, you could basically run anything from cepheus or traveler in 3d just by adding one to all the skill levels um so uh, the combat um i was saying that you know when you know when you do damage there's no hit points it, it's taken directly off the stat um you know if you get hit in the head it's going to reduce your logic which is your um sort of intelligence stat um so yeah if you get hit in the head you don't think so clearly um they're kind of broadly spread out so you know being shot in the foot or hit in the foot um makes you less agile um you know, if you get hit in the uh, abdomen sort of thing it's um going to make you know, wind to you you know that's the logic of what's going on here um there's the only sort of caveat with the combat is that if you use every possible rule and every possible piece of equipment um, it, it's an active combat um, system so you are you know the attacker gets to see if they hit and then if they do they get to roll the location then roll their damage and special damage like bleeding and burning and things like that but the defender is also involved you know, if they're wearing a shield they get to see if the shield um, works and um, if they're wearing armor they get to deduct their armor then they they apply the damage so both your attackers and your defenders are involved but if everything if everyone's doing everything it can get um it can get you know as slow as some of the more in-depth systems today you know it's it's never going to be as complex as something like rollmaster but um you know, in fantasy games when everyone's got heavy armor and shields um it can slow down in in modern and, and uh, sci-fi where you know, clanking around in armor is far less common you know, the armor disappears people don't wear shields running around new york you know solving murders you know, when you get away from all the heavy armor you know um sword and board stuff it's much, much uh, faster um so yeah combat yeah it's damage comes off stats no hit points and things like that um different classes of weapons because you can improvise anything because it's all on this three levels you know light medium heavy ancient modern and future everything in um threes you get knocked back if you got um if you take a blow in combat you know if you shoot someone they fly back you know is which, which makes this whole you know 
back in the 80s and things there was this thing of where you get two tough fighters standing abreast in a um, corridor and they could hold back a horde of orcs you can't do that here because you are going to um you know be knocked back by blows you are you you will impose movement and if that knocks people off castle walls then they go flying off the castle walls all that sort of thing right so um the special damage comes uses the ones and sixes rule so if you roll sixes that counts if you're using a flamethrower and you roll three six, 18 on your damage that's three sixes that's going to do three points of burning damage um and they will continue to burn until they sort of drop and roll and try and put it out um if you're using a sword and you roll you know, 2d6 and you get roll um a six and uh, a four so it's 10 damage but the six will cause one point of bleeding you know it's uh so that's that's one to six is rolls which is used for skills also comes over to the combat um and there are little some, some difficulty factors there um some basic rules for things like moving and firing um gun in each hand weapon failures um, which is the ones from the ones and sixes rules and then we've got a, a a creatures and monsters section rules starting off with how to build your own because it is a generic system anything could exist um and then i've given you you know you know, several pages um, of common, uh, you know, fantasy and sci-fi creatures and uh, dinosaurs and things. And then we've got um, vehicles and movement. Um, vehicles have three stats, um, so sort of strength, which is their structural integrity. Uh, sorry, the, the strength, which is the um, sort of the sheer pulling power of a vehicle, is integrity, is its structural strength, and then it's um, speed oh, so it's got the five stats um the it's got a logic for some systems are you know, more intelligent than others and more dependent on their computer systems so a bicycle has got a logic of zero um a, you know a modern fighter aircraft would probably have a, a you know say a 12 you know it'd be and it's got control so as you damage vehicles it will you'll be you, you could damage its control you can damage its computer systems you can slow it down you can destroy its structural integrity you know, so it vehicles are characters it, to all intents and purposes um so yeah so that goes into what i was explaining just then well not really explaining but covering so when you um hit a vehicle you just roll to see where it um which system is hit and then you apply the damage to its stats there's examples of light medium and heavy vehicles and um, how many points they're, they're point by um, and how special damage you know setting vehicles on fire and that sort of thing um, and then healing and that's basically the entire game up until that point uh, 58 pages probably 56 by the time you're taking off contents and whatnot um, it's as much toolkit to build as it is playable game off the bat. You then get an integrated solo system, um, which is all built on story arcs. Um, but it also um, interfaces with... Do you remember every character had family and motivations? It uses those. Um, in So if you if you've created your um uh, your character and its background and its backstory and you've got all those sorts of connections you can then use these in the solo system um so yeah there's it, three pages of solo rules and then an example um a game session in the um is three or four scenes i think uh with um kellen my character he he's a scottish um pro detective in new york um and so there's your um you know the your solo thing then you've got some quick reference um and a couple of a, a additional um solo rules and then we're into the uh, ogl so that's what you get um 
I've always said that this is going to be a game for um, game masters to world world build, um, but there's it's very very flexible, um, and so yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope you buy it and enjoy it.